All right, for me, it's Black Friday. For you guys, I don't know, I'm behind. So uh, working on the 4G swapped MR2 today. And just as a recap, if you didn't watch the last video, we have it mounted, solidly mounted both sides here and a nice rear roll stop. Remove the stock fuel tank and uh, make room. Well, the filler neck was in the way. Had to make room for exhaust manifold. The heater core lines are gonna be fine. They can go over the exhaust manifold, which I'll have wrapped, and then potentially around here to the back here where the heater core lines go into the 4G. And today's task though, uh, Eric Hux from Hux Racing and KSwapMR2.com uh, very sternly told me to get rid of the <laughs> stock fuse box back here, that it's completely unnecessary. There's only a couple of lines uh, that you need. So this goes into the stock ECU, which is gone. This we're keeping. This is all the rear brake uh, and whatever. All these lines, uh, wires back here. So keep that. Uh, already deleted some wires that went this way, as well as the power antenna. Uh, there was like cruise control, ABS, and stuff like that. And unplug that all the way up here at the fuse box. That, oh yeah, I had plenty of mice living in here or the previous owner did, so I'm still cleaning up stuff. So that's that. This side, still working on getting all of the wiring undone. Uh, we also have an aftermarket stereo system that was put in here at one point. I'm going to remove all these wires right now. Some of it was tied into stock stuff. Some of it was ran separately and I intend to wire my own Bluetooth amp. Um, so no receiver, just uh, Bluetooth to your phone. And it's five channel amp, run components and a sub and all that stuff. So I'm gonna wire that in later. So a lot of this right here is gonna go away. I think most of this is gonna go away because I think most of that is for the uh, stereo. The good news about getting rid of a lot of this is that the fuel tech wiring harness should be able to tuck in here then too. Um, let's see, what else am I deleting? Oh, there was stock amplifier stuff for this, the stock little sub and speakers, that's gone. A, a, a alarm system on that side, that's gone. There's still a cruise control box somewhere. It actually might be gone already. I think it was in here. And there's the airbag computer um, behind and underneath the HVAC. I need to delete that. And that's gonna free up more room for wiring and fuel tech fuses. And there's an ABS computer somewhere. Somewhere. Need to delete that. And then I have a fresh system where hopefully headlights work, taillights, wipers, taillights are back there, headlights, turn signals, taillights, wipers, heating, and that's about it. Uh, I'll tap in for a starter and make my own relay there. There we go. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. All right, little update. I wanna show you how I like to go through and delete stuff. So what I do is I find items that I know I don't need. So this was an oil level sensor computer that went between the dash and the engine. Um, had to do some Googling on that. On the box, it's by Toyota, it's called an OK monitor. So I guess it tells you if your engine's okay, if it has oil or not. So I don't need that, it's not gonna do anything. So I cut it off. Uh, this was for the speakers that are here. Like, again, I'll run my own stuff later. So cut that off. Uh, this is for the door sensor for the lights. So keep that. And then what I'll do is I'll just strip this back, pull it out, and it's gonna end up going down in through here somewhere and likely into one of those connectors there. So I'll strip all of that out. It may, do, it may go down the center here. There is a bunch of stereo wiring there. And that's the plan. So I gotta unloom all of this. But again, a lot of it's going away. So I've escalated. <laughs> Most of that stereo wiring, but 
I can't really get to it. So looking up a YouTube video on removing the dash, um, I'm nearly there, I believe. So it'll help me get to the airbag computer and all that stuff anyway. Uh, and now I'm removing this branch of wires that went to the back. So I finally got all that unclipped so I can pull this all out. Some of these we keep, some we delete. Defrost and third brake light wiring. I'm going to keep that. Come on. There we go. All right. Check this out. Whew. All right. So this goes to tail lights, firewall, what used to be the fuse box. We will keep this, put a different plug on it for the alternator. I'll crimp on an end. I have a hydraulic Amazon crimper that works really well. Uh, like I said, keep that and then delete a lot of this. So I'll be following along on Eric Hux's video and instructions. Thank you, sir. All right, this harness is back in. Runs through there. No fuse box at all. Apparently you have to wire the reverse switch in, uh, which I actually am gonna just do to a rocker um, in the dash because I have an automatic and nothing stock. Uh, but no fuse box here. And then these are all the wires that just run to the tail lights. I have a, getting ready to, Mark. when Marcus comes out, he's gonna help me. I'm gonna, oh, that's the reverse. Here's the starter. I'm gonna test that should be 12 volts once the um, key is turned to start. That's the main starter uh, power. I have an alternator power here. Just need to trim that and crimp new end on because alternator is up here versus back here on the 3S GTE. Uh, so that's there pulled out, good to go. And then redid all of that. There is far less wires now back here. And then all of this is tucked and plugs back in. So still need to pull the dash. I was reading on doing that. I need to get the HVAC out so I can pull it. I already dropped the steering wheel down a little bit and then I can finish pulling all these. Uh, I'm gonna do some research. I'm not using the stock dash. So I'd like to, there's a lot of uh, dash wires in there. I'd like to delete all of those. I need a lot of space for the fuel tech harness to go down and around, and there's uh, three relays. Helper also. made it. All right, climb in here, yo. All right. So just watch this down here, and then we're going to turn. Why don't you turn the key on? Like all the way on, or just one turn? Uh, two turns. Right there. Oops. Okay. So let's test the tail lights. Uh, click that forward all the way. Just twist it. Bam. All right. Can you hit the brakes? Move this out of the way. Middle, middle. Yeah, middle pedal. Yeah. Nice. Okay. All right. Next, I'm gonna, I have to uh, get the multimeter, so I'll tell you when, but try starting it. It won't do anything, but give me a sec. All right, this is gonna be difficult to do. Yee. 
All right, try it. You turning it? Yeah. Uh oh. It's not working. Huh? Like? Well, just let go of it. All right, try it again. Did you try clicking it? Try turning it to the right. All the way, is it all the way to the right? Uh-oh. Well, I guess I lost my starter wire. That is not working. You guys, you guys couldn't see that, but it wasn't working. I thought that was the starter wire. Uh, I don't know what I did. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to find that under here. Should I turn it off now? Yeah, you can turn it off. So yeah, we're gonna have to find the starter signal underneath here somewhere. And then we're gonna run a relay to trigger the solenoid. Cool. Thanks. You're welcome. All right, take two. I realized that uh, there's a clutch pedal in there, and the clutch pedal is uh, kind of, it's, it's down all the way, so it's triggering the clutch switches. So, we're doing this again. All right, go ahead, Marcus. There we go. Well, you can't really see that, but look, uh, hold on. All right, let go. All right, do it again. Bam. All right, let go. Sweet. All right, it's the next day. I'm tired. I ended up starting to route the fuel tech harness and I was able to get the uh, airbag computer out. Um, and Decided not to take the dash out at this time to trace everything. Uh, looked like a colossal pain. But with the airbag computer out, there is room to stuff fuel tech harness in there. So those white plugs are for HVAC control. But then the fuel tech harness is routed up through there. Up here to the dash. And then it'll route along here. Although it looks, whoops, thick, the um, center console does fit. And then I'm gonna cut a hole probably right here. This one's not big enough and I wanna be able to make sure it tucks down. So I'm thinking right here. And then the nice thing about going out through the center is it can come out here and wrap around this way. So wrap around to injectors, to crank, to cam, um, I believe is all on this side. So actually some might be on that side. Either way, we'll get it routed. But yeah, otherwise if I came through here, it's gotta, there's gonna be fuel stuff here. I'd have to wrap around here and get, um, I think, messier looking than tucking there which is kind of how stock is even though it's everything's flipped but on a mitsu kind of wraps from the wraps around there if i recall I'm not sure what to do with these so this is inputs and outputs that i'm gonna have to wire up uh some need to go to just right there to the shifter no big deal others are gonna have to go through uh solid state relay there's room back here for some of that stuff um i don't think there's room to tuck this underneath here i'm always changing stuff too so i kind of was thinking of leaving it out tucking it here beside the seat man i can't even think uh but yeah tucking there behind beside the seat so i could get to it if i wanted to um not sure yet. Still determining that. Nitrous bottle looks like it would fit there nicely. You may try that. So there we go. I'm gonna continue working on this, cut a hole in, 
half route this around. Obviously this engine and everything has to come out yet. And then I don't know what's next. I'd like to get on the suspension stuff because I want to check for wheel fitment up front because I have to order wheels for the front and tires. So a lot to do, a lot to do. Yay, wiring. So trans that I got from Mr. Jewer, he had it wired up for a two pin weather pack. So I bought some of these on trusty Amazon and pinned this side already. Pretty easy. And then now I am sleeving it. So I'll sleeve that side, um, should be able to heat shrink it and then cut it to length. And then I need to, it'll go into these uh, outputs here, these yellow ones. So I'll deep in this and do that. So I'm gonna try to wire up most of the inputs and outputs at least what I can. I think I can do all the inputs. So um, those are two outputs. Everything on here is inputs. I took a couple tries. I uh, had the wrong pins, but got it. Uh, I'm probably gonna leave these pigtails just in case I run out of pins. Um, but this is input. No, that's output. Whoops, yeah, that's correct. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, output to the trans, fuel tech is going to run the trans so that's that's only two solenoids uh solenoid a and b and it toggles between those to get uh first through fourth gear so that's that uh i think i'm gonna wire up the shifter next and that goes to inputs let's see if i get this right All right i got let's see two step uh rolling anti-lag slash three-step i think they call it and nitrous so through the msd solid state relay and let's see i have a few things ran to the front so i have um fuel tech's going to trigger the line lock based off certain parameters so that um goes to the relay and then to the front so that's, I got to plumb it. And then I also triggering the fan through here. So it's a um, ground trigger to the relay. And then I'm going to use the positive off the relay uh, to the front to this. So then I can just ground the relay to the chassis triggered from here and to the fan and stuff. So, um, and I'll just, I'll run that straight off the battery up front. Yeah, uh, that's about it up here. I have starter wire somewhere. There's the thick uh, from the battery stock wiring. And then that's the solenoid wire and all the other wires are underneath the car. So I'll still have to wire for a cam and crank TPS and I think that's it. Oh, and the um, speed sensor. Oh, you know what? I can actually finish that. So I can finish wiring that because that uh, goes independent of the regular harness. So I'll do that. And then I'm basically done until I'm not going to do the wiring on here. I don't have all the uh, bracketry and everything anyway. It's with the long block. So I'll have to finish the wiring once I get the motor back and in. So. <laughs> <laughs> 